Hello, I'm Lisa Green, one of the writers for BMC Cloud Lifecycle Management, and this video describes what's new in version 4.1. You can now assign multiple tenants to a tenant administrator from BMC Cloud Lifecycle Management consoles, and the multi-tenant administrator can perform almost all administration activities for the tenants. When defining a network for an environment in Quick Start, you can now select a specific port group. In earlier releases, you selected a VLAN, which allocated all of the port groups associated with that VLAN. When using Quick Start to onboard existing VMs into BMC Cloud Lifecycle Management, you can now specify a service type, VMware or AWS. Making this choice associates the resulting service offering instance with the type of service that originally generated the VM. In earlier releases of BMC Cloud Lifecycle Management, if the IP address of a virtual machine changed, the IP address in BMC Cloud Lifecycle Management remained unchanged. In version 4.1, if the IP address of a VM changes, for example if the IP renewal or DHCP lease expires, the change is reflected when you synchronize or refresh the service offering instance under the Services or Servers tab under My Services. When adding additional disks to a service through a post-deployment action, you can now specify a disk size of 0 GB for IBM local partitions. This enables you to create two adapter pairs for multipathing. For more information, see the BMC documentation. Virtual machine disks now have display names of disk 1, disk 2, and so on, according to the order in which the disks were provisioned. This provides a simpler and clearer view of the disks in the BMC Cloud Lifecycle Management user interface. If you want existing disks to benefit from the change in naming, run disk rename utility.zip after installation. For more information, see the BMC documentation. As a cloud end user, you can now view the quota allocated to you from the My Cloud Services console. On the Service Instances pane, click View My Quota. Note that you cannot change any quota details from the console. A cloud administrator can create cost centers and add them to a tenant or create global cost centers, which can be used across tenants. On the Tenants pane in the Cost Centers area, click Add Cost Center. Then enter the information in the Add Cost Center dialog box. A tenant administrator can only associate cost centers to users, not create cost centers. Version 4.1 includes enhanced support for Amazon Web Services, including auto-scaling for virtual private clouds. You can now use the service health charts to create auto-scaling health checks. You might use this functionality to automatically add or remove servers, CPUs, or memory while responding to over- or under-utilization situations. You can also use Quick Start to onboard existing EC2 VMs in parity with on-premise VMs using the new Service Type option. Selecting AWS as the service type associates the resulting SOI with the type of service that originally generated the VM. Networking improvements include custom IPAM enhancements and DNS registration and deregistration for static IPs for Linux, Windows, and Infoblox DNS servers. New support for the Palo Alto PA4050 firewall, Alcatel Lucent Vital QIP 7.3 as a third-party IP address management solution, and improved pod and container management. In the Create and Edit Network Container Wizards, the administrator can now select a value from a list of available runtime parameters or enter a new value. 
Virtualization enhancements include these things. With IBM Local Partitions, you can now add or remove NPIV disks as day two actions, reuse WWPN adapter pairs, and use multipathing for NPIV disks. For Hyper-V, Microsoft Windows 2012 R2 guests are a new supported hypervisor platform. Windows 2012 R2 is also a newly supported platform for BMC Cloud Lifecycle Management. Many commands and APIs were added and updated in BMC Cloud Lifecycle Management 4.1. These are just a few. Azure providers can now add the virtual machines to an availability set during provisioning and manage the availability of an application that uses multiple VMs. Add servers to a load balancer pool. Allocate and view tenant and user quota for the Azure provider users in BMC Cloud Lifecycle Management. Request an Azure Cloud service on behalf of another user and share and transfer ownership of an existing Azure Cloud service. And lastly, OpenStack providers can now place VMs on specific subnets of an OpenStack virtual network, allocate and view tenant and user quota usage for the OpenStack provider users in BMC Cloud Lifecycle Management, install a software on a provisioned VM, Shut down a provisioned VM in OpenStack. Request an OpenStack cloud service on behalf of another user. Share and transfer ownership of an existing OpenStack cloud service. And allow SSH key pair to enable access to a VM provisioned in the OpenStack cloud, for example, CloudWatt. Enhancements for OpenStack providers also include support for public cloud, CloudWatt, services, and resources, and support for Folsom, Grizzly, Havana, and Icehouse release components. I hope this video has given you a good overview of the new functionality you can find in BMC Cloud Lifecycle Management 4.1. Thank you for watching.